Welcome back Tombs, One Dragon here. Today I'm taking a look at the new weapon stats or bonus effects found after patch 1.5 and tested in patch 1.52. You can find these in the NCPD quests, lootable containers or safes in gigs from Cyber Psychos and other locations. Once again, these are more of the unlisted changes made to the game after patch 1.5. In patch 1.5, CDPR introduced a lot more RNG based mechanics which are typically seen in tabletop game adaptations or RPGs. I've already looked at specialized clothing in a different video but today we're particularly looking at guns. The three categories of guns, power, smart and tech, each have their own new bonus effect pools to draw from. Before I go over these new stats and effects there's a couple of other notes. Firstly, these weapons have a lot of RNG or randomness associated with them. Some of the loot containers, especially the ones found in gigs, have randomized loot. The same container can have either a crafting spec, clothing, an attachment, or a weapon. As far as I'm aware, the item in those containers cannot be re-rolled, only its rarity and these new effects. For example, if it's a legendary weapon, then it can either roll as epic or legendary, and it'll also have a random number of mod slots. In other words, if you find a weapon that you like, to get a perfect version, you'll be rolling for quite a while. Whether you need a perfect weapon or not depends on how much damage is in your build. I didn't test every bonus effect on every weapon type, and unfortunately, if you store these items in the storage, it doesn't show the effects. If I miss anything, let me know in the comments. I spent a lot of time re-rolling weapons to check these bonus effects, but I still could have missed some. Firstly, taking a look at power weapons. There are 8 bonus stats or effects available. For me, these new effects seemed to replace the crit chance, crit damage, and ricochet damage bonuses that came default on any store-bought or crafted legendary power weapon. This means that you'll be sacrificing a fair chunk of damage for these effects. However, they are good if you don't stack crit or ricochet damage, and the new effects are also fairly good in the early game before you can stack crit to a high enough level. Taking a look at the first three, these impact recoil or bullet spread. The first one being eliminates vertical recoil while aiming, reduces weapon sway by 50%, and bullet spread is reduced after every shot by 80%. Of these three, I believe the best is the Eliminate Vertical Recoil. In prior patches, this used to be on the Counter Mass Gun modification, but that has been changed to Eliminate Horizontal Recoil, and can be used alongside this effect to eliminate both horizontal and vertical recoil simultaneously. I tested this on a Pulsar SMG and a Defender LMG with and without the counter mass mod and it worked really well. Obviously this effect is most useful if you find you're using an entire clip or half a clip to defeat enemies, but once you can one shot everything it becomes less useful. Reduces weapon sway by 50% is useful to increase accuracy when firing from a distance. Unfortunately, I didn't find many power sniper rifles or precision rifles in my first playthrough, so I just ended up testing it on a Masamune assault rifle. It did have a noticeable effect, but I personally don't find the weapon sway to be too bad, but it's an option if you are struggling with long distance shots. As for the bullet spread reduction, I tried this on a Shigure SMG, but it didn't have a noticeable impact. Next, there's two ricochet bonuses. Increased damage from ricochets by 12% and ricochet engine. Increases damage from ricochet by 12%. In my opinion, this one is not really worth it as base stats generally improve ricochet damage by more than 12%. And remember, these bonus stats remove crit chance, crit damage, and bonus ricochet damage. As for the second one, Ricochet Engine, I am not sure what this one does. I tried it for a little but couldn't really figure it out. If I had to guess, it could add additional bounces or could guarantee ricochets, but that's a hidden stat, so I'm not really sure. The last three power bonus effects are 
reduces weapon draw time by half, increases damage by 20%, increases projectile kinetic energy by 6 times, increasing the chance to knock down an enemy, and reduces enemy armor by 10 for 10 seconds. The first one, reduces weapon draw time by half, increases damage by 20%, is pretty good. It allows you to swap between weapons much faster and increases damage by that 20%. This is likely the best bonus effect, especially if you don't stack crit stats. This shows up on the weapon stats, and additional damage is always good. The next one is reduces enemy armor by 10 for 10 seconds. According to the database accessed from the homepage, 10 armor reduces roughly 1 DPS for the player, which is not really a lot. Once again, enemy armor may be another invisible stat, so it's hard to tell how useful this is. I also tried this on tankier enemies, but there was not a significant enough of a difference compared to the same gun without the bonus armor reduction. It might be good in the early game or on a low damage build. Finally, there's increases projectile kinetic energy by 6 times, increasing the chance to knock down an enemy. Firstly, I tried this on a pistol and an assault rifle, but it didn't seem to cause any knockdowns. So maybe it only works with shotguns, but it's kind of annoying that it appears on other weapon types as well. I did try it on shotguns, and there were maybe one or two additional knockdowns, but it's kind of hard to tell once you have enough damage to one-shot enemies anyway. Either that or it could be bugs, but it's kind of hard to say. Personally, I found the best bonus effects are eliminates vertical recoil while aiming and reduces weapon draw time and increases damage by 20%. Moving on to smart weapons. I found 5 bonus effects for smart weapons. These all seemed pretty decent, however similarly to the power weapons, these bonuses are in exchange for crit stats normally found on crafted or store-bought variations. The first bonus effect is allowing you to use smart weapons without the required cyberware or the smart link hands. This works and is good if you're not using the smart link hands and are using the ricochet hands. From here, I equipped the legendary smart link to test the other four bonus effects. Weapon tracks two additional targets. This bonus effect is always useful when fighting groups of enemies and when you're outnumbered. You can easily shred through groups of enemies and not have to snap between targets. The remaining three effects are locking on lasts two seconds longer after losing sight of the target, reduces lock-on time by 50%, and increases projectile velocity by 50%. I tested all of these briefly using a couple of TKI-20 Shingens and a Yukimura. The additional 2 seconds of locked-in time is decent if your damage is low or if you're slow to get the correct angle to curve your bullets. Reduces lock-on time is mainly useful for moving on to or swapping between enemies. Finally, as mentioned in the patch 1.5 notes, the projectiles from smart guns were sped up already, so with the increased projectile velocity by another 50% bonus, it means that enemies will be taken down even quicker. This makes using smart weapons much safer than before, as there is a shorter window for enemies to land counterattacks. For smart weapons, the iconic seems significantly better. However, if you find some of these effects on something like the Ashura, where there is currently no iconic version, it may be worth playing around with. Finally, we have tech weapons. There are seven bonus effects for tech weapons, four that impact charging or wall piercing, and three damage buffs. 
Once again, these stats or bonuses replace crit chance and crit damage. However, on tech weapons, there are some powerful effects which can certainly be stronger than crit chance and crit damage. In the right situations, or with the right builds, some of these are on par or even greater than the iconic effects. Firstly, looking at the charging bonus effects. The first one is reduces weapon charge by 50%. Reduces charge time for tech weapons by stat 0%. I assume this is bugged. Reduces the minimum charge required to penetrate walls by 50%. And finally, increases charge threshold to 75%. I'm not sure what this one does. Of these weapon charging bonuses, I tested the reduced charge time by 50% on a DB2 Satara tech shotgun. This effect is reflected on the weapon stats. You can see that it has a 0.3 charge time as opposed to a 0.8 charge time. There are a number of really strong tech damage modifiers which I'm about to discuss. However, if you have enough damage in your build to one-shot enemies without them, then this bonus effect of reduced charge time is worth considering. The reduced charge time will also speed up tech weapon gameplay in general, so I definitely recommend this one. Moving on to the damage bonuses. The first one is fires two rounds at once, but significantly lowers the rate of fire. Fully charged weapons deal 10% more damage and increase damage from charged tech weapons by a maximum of 40%, depending on the amount charged. I have a weapon for all of these stats, but of these three, I'd have to recommend the fires two rounds at once and the bonus 40% damage when fully charged. I decided to go for the two rounds at once on the Necromata, which turned out to be super powerful. To clarify, when I tested it, the Necromata actually fires two additional rounds, so it ends up being three in total. What's great about this effect is that it doesn't consume additional ammo. This is similar to the other multi-projectile weapons like the Widowmaker and Doom Doom. I found it to be pretty fun to use and enabled me to easily one-shot a bunch of Cyber Psychos. The 40% additional charge damage is reflected on the weapon stats, as you can see when comparing the Quasar Tech Pistol. On a regular crafted Quasar, the charge multiplier was plus 90%, while the one with the bonus on it had 130%. This bonus stat ended up being really strong, so I definitely recommend going for this if you're fond of using tech weapons. Overall, some of these new weapon effects seem pretty good, whereas others are weaker than iconic variants. Normally, when I start a new playthrough and decide on my build or attribute spread, it's often based around what weapons I'm planning to use in that playthrough. However, due to the RNG looting system and needing to re-roll to get mod slots, or a specific bonus effect, it's hard to plan a build around finding these weapons. Instead, it's fun to play around with these weapons when you come across them, or you can pivot your build if you find them early enough to do so, or at a convenient time. Unless the weapon stats are bugged, these bonus stats or effects are seemingly in exchange for bonus crit or ricochet stats, so you'll have to carefully consider whether they're worth using or not. I assume they'll also be looking at melee weapons in future, but we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you've played around with these bonuses already, let me know what you think in the comments. There's plenty of other Cyberpunk 2077 videos that I'm planning to make, so consider subscribing. I'll see you next time, tubes.